From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time. Transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of The Mask of Monatiki. Tarzan walks slowly along the rugged elephant trail, pondering on the horrible fate of so many strangers who had braved the fierce Congo. And lost in thought, he was oblivious of the band of chattering monkeys who swung from tree to tree, following in his wake. And finally, they wearied of the game and scampered off, save for one tiny simian who dodged Tarzan's footsteps, shrilly demanding recognition. <laughs> I'm sorry, small one, but today I have no patience. Nikima, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> oh, now, careful, Nikima. Your nails are as sharp as those of Sheet of the Panther. Uh, suppose you sit quietly on my shoulder and tell me what you've been up to during these many moons you've been away. As I recall, the last I saw of you, you were in pursuit of a very pretty little female monkey. Huh? Well, well, that's that's fine. I'm happy you decided to marry, settle down, and raise a family. Well, at least you returned in time to cheer me up. Before the wind changed, I caught an alien scent. It was called... Oh, so you still have the disposition of a small boy, huh? All right, Nikima, we'll play tag. I can travel as quickly as you, Nikima. And I, too, can swing up into the upper level... Here's a vine right here that I can use. Uh. Oh. oh, where is he? He couldn't have gone too far in this length of time. Stay right where you are, little monkey. Now, now, don't move. I've been hunting for a specimen like you for days now. And I'm right in position to get a good shot off. I'll just take careful aim and then... Do not attempt to make a move. My knife moves quickly, and I have no pity for one who would shoot down a defenseless monkey. Oh, no harm to this cunning little rascal. But I heard you cajoling him to remain still so that you could get a good shot at him. Oh, not at him, jungle man of him. It was a camera I held in my hand until you pounced on me. Uh, I owe you an apology. Uh, Nikima, put down that camera. If you break it up... Your camera, sir. I hope it's undamaged. Mm, looks all right. <laughs> Despite Nakima and my best efforts to ruin it. You needn't apologize. I love animals as much as you obviously do. That's why I won't even carry a gun when I come out to shoot pictures. You come into the middle Congo alone without any weapon? Well, I'm no longer a young man, and I have about all I can do to carry my photographic equipment and a few living essentials. Uh, my name's Albright, by the way. Yours? Tarzan. And since we're now friends and you have accepted one apology, I shall make another. I was mistaken about your odor. My odor? <laughs> you, don't, you mean I don't follow the advice of the right head? <laughs> no, not that. But every living thing has a special scent. That's how a man's dog can recognize him, even in the pitch dark. Some animals have a keener sense of smell than others, and mine is most highly developed. I see. But uh, what are you getting at? One reason I pounced on you without even looking down at your weapon was that a foreign scent assailed my nostrils only a short time before our meeting, just before the wind shifted. My anger was directed at you, but the scent was not yours, Mr. Albright. But even if there are some other foreigners in the vicinity, what's the harm in it? When strangers have entered the jungle in the past, it has always meant great trouble for themselves or for others. I have no reason to believe that this occasion will be different. Uh, 
I must say, this camp you've built is a welcome change for me. And better bow it promises to be much more comfortable than curling up on top of a rock. And that little cave you found proved an ideal spot for developing my film. Why must you develop them right away? Well, sometimes with all the heat and dampness of the jungle, fungi or mildew can ruin an entire spool of film. I'd have hated to lose that shot of the pygmy rhino, for example. I'm sorry I spoiled that picture of Nakima, but perhaps he'll pose for you some other time. He's uh, gone to rejoin his family, but he might well be back. <laughs> He's an awful gypsy. Do you really understand his chattering? Well, not the words, actually, but... When one has spent a lifetime in the jungle, a literal translation of the language of animals isn't really necessary. You see that chaos just beyond the fringe of firelight? Chaos? An African wildcat. Wildcat? Well, hadn't, hadn't we better... Well, that was what I meant. I can tell at a glance that he's recently feasted well and has been attracted only by curiosity. It's the two-legged animals who are drawn to a campfire that one must be wary of. I see you're back on your favorite subject. Well, if those men you smelled aren't miles away by this time, then they must have constituted the meal your friend, the uh, Chaos, recently enjoyed. I think not. The Chaos dined on a jungle fowl while the strangers were climbing that hill in the distance looking for a campsite. When they observed our fire, they started down, and they should reach the north edge of this clearing within a matter of minutes. Why, George, I wish I had your Ouija board. They're breaking through the brush right now. What a fantastic shot they'd make. Oh, their wardrobe would provide a colorful picture. The Negro in his fifth helmet and store clothes. The, the, the Oriental in that elaborate Chinese robe. And the white man in the crude garments of a Diala trader. They're certainly the strangest traveling companions I've ever seen. In Africa, only the normal is strange. And the strange is completely normal. I dare say... But I don't like the looks of them. Oh, they're guns. Now back to our story of Tarzan. We shall attempt to be considerate campmates. My name is Roberts, and this gentleman is Mr. Tsao. This lowly one humbly adds his thanks for your graciousness in receiving us into your temporary abode. And this is Wotan. I don't know you, gents. I am Tarzan, and this jungle is my home. My companion is Mr. Albright, who's come here to take pictures of wild animals. What brings you here? And serving as a guide, these gentlemen seek native African masks to take back to civilization. Masks? For many years, this unworthy one has stood in great awe and admiration of the exquisite masks created by primitive people. Not me. I can't see what anyone sees in them. But they're bringing a fortune in Khartoum and Nairobi, and, well, as long as fools are paid dough for them, I'll lug back a sackful. According to Robert here, they are turned out wholesale by those Monotiki people. Monotiki? I would advise you to do your trading with some other tribe. No fiercer or more treacherous breed exists in the entire Congo than those of Monotiki. This humble one would not, for a potentate's wealth, relinquish the possibility of viewing their mass. A payoff's worth the risk, according to the way I figure it. If you know anything of the Congo, Robert, you must realize the dangers of entering the Monotiki crawl. I know it well, Tarzan. Do not let my speech, acquired through a college education, mislead you. I am of the tribe, Monotiki. But Tarzan, I still can't understand why you insisted on joining them in their trek to the Monotiki village. I am known as the Lord of the Jungle, Mr. Albright. If I can prevent even one casualty in the Congo, that title will have been partially earned. Well, with Robert, a member of their own tribe in our party, we may be safer than otherwise. Perhaps. Now, tell me why you really came along. Tarzan, my youth is far behind me and I can't live forever. So if I can add a few unusual pictures to my collection, a few more exciting experiences to my memories, it's all that I ask. Do you think we could stop for a second? Certainly. We can catch up with the others. 
You want a picture of that white oryx? Uh, right. I, I think I can pick him up with my telescopic lens. Now, which compartment of my bag did I put that lens in? Shall I hold your camera? Uh, I can just rest it on this tree trunk while I search. Must be under these packages of developer. I haven't used it since I... Uh, Nakima! All right, grab your camera. He's making a beeline for us. Good work. I'm sorry, little playmate. You, you, you can't have Mr. Albright's camera, no matter how fascinating you find it. Well, your ex is gone. Oh, well, I'll spot another one someday. Where do you suppose Nakima has been? Uh, foraging for food for his family, perhaps. He laid in the stock for them, and now he's come to rejoin us. I yeah, wish he could find a little food my poor old stomach could cope with. <laughs> so far, my digestion has been our only casualty. Oh, perhaps there's been another. Our friends have turned back. Cousin! Yes, Robert? What's wrong? I thought something was wrong with you when we looked back and found you weren't behind us. Hey, everything okay? I just stopped to take a picture, Mr. Vaughan. Huh? Oh. We gravely fear that fate had robbed us of your esteemed company upon our journey. I don't know why, but I had the strange idea that none of you was enthusiastic about our joining the safari. Once you assured me that you had no intention of dissuading us from our objective. I was most happy to welcome you as member of our humble group. What true lover of art could deprive another of the joys to be derived from viewing the imaginative craftsmanship of the fetisher? The witch? The fetisher is a combination high priest, magistrate, and physician. The fetisher of Monatiki is most skilled in the making of masks and in translating the wishes of those effigies. He tells what the masks want to say? Uh, have I got that straight? Well, many of the masks have religious significance. They are vested with unusual powers. The Fetishur is the father of the religious masks. Others of the tribe take care of those designed for the remaining two classifications, the war masks and those of the dance. Well, they're all the same to me. I don't mind who comes along, just so none of you try to chisel in on my racket. The only reason I hesitated at first was that I feel responsible for each additional member of the party. It is important now that we are nearing the village that we remain close together. The sentries of Monotiki are deadly accurate with their blow guns. And the poison of their darts springs instantaneous death. I can't say I like the way they're all watching us, peering from every doorway. Just keep walking. Had they not recognized Robert, we wouldn't have got this far without a struggle. Uh, Robert, what did that one geezer mean when he looked at you and said, uh, Roboco? It was my name before I left the village. And I am Robert now. Uh, you better stay on my shoulder then, Akima. Now uh, the chief is coming to greet us. Observe the beauteous masks outside their temple. Incredible beauty. Unbelievable skill. Fifty to a hundred bucks a piece on any market. And I can get them for a string of beads or a jackknife. Welcome to village of Monotiki. Our greetings to you, mighty chief, and our thanks for permitting us to enter. You came with one of tribe. Roboko, your clothes fine. Look like a man of wealth. Do well in city of white man. You come from behind shadow. Santa, mighty chief. But why you bring others? These men are our friends. Their only interest is in seeing our tribal masks. This unworthy one bows low before great beauty of those that decorate outside of your temple. Yeah, they're sure swell. Wait, you see what is inside. I show you. The mask of Monotiki. Father, all masks. Voice, our destiny. Come. Ah, you do us great honor, mighty leader of men. He's, he's taking us all inside the temple. Isn't that pretty unusual? It is most unusual. The compliments concerning the masks evidently pleased him very much. Nikima, you better stay outside. Aren't you? Hey, get a load of the joint. Its splendor blinds these unworthy eyes. Well, Mr. Albright, you've realized at least one experience to add to your memories. You and I have never seen such a place. Hey, who's the goon standing over there giving us the fish eye? 
He is the fetisher. Moalimolete Mikio Monotiki. The chief is telling him to bring the mask of Monotiki. Wow. Hey, look at that contraption they keep it in. <laughs> All safe ain't got anything on that. Fetisher is the possessor of the only key to the tabernacle. He's opening again only because the chief told him to do so. Yeah, he sure don't look overjoyed, but... Holy cow, look at that thing. Solid gold and enough jewels on it to retire on. Never has this humble one seen such rare artistry. The craftsmanship proclaims a heritage that could only have come from the Medis or Persians. To be able to take such a masterpiece to the museums of the world would be to attain immortality. Please, Mr. Albright, in one second you could turn them against us. Sorry, I, I thought I could take a picture while no one was paying any attention to me. Come now, you are guests of tribe. Chief, provide Hema for you. We're, we're all to share a hut in the village? Apparently. I guess this performance is over. The fetisher is putting the mask away. Look at it, fellow, isn't he? He resents us strenuously. You, man with hair like winter. Yes? Leave white man's magic in temple. What? He's telling you to leave your camera here. It would be well to do as he says. Oh, sure, sure. I just wish there were a little pixie around to snap a few shots while it's here. They'd give my right arm for a picture of that mask. Well, you gotta admit this shack they give us ain't so bad. Oh, it's very, very late. I suggest we all attempt to sleep. Who knows what tomorrow may hold in store for us. Oh, I'm sure surprised they give us the run of the place. You should see the mess I got already and I hardly started. And I have combed the village from one end to the other. I have filled every pore of my being with the ecstatic beauty of their artistry. You, Mr. Albright? Oh, I've just been wandering around, Robert, looking at everything and... <laughs> Wishing my camera wasn't locked up inside. Hey, hey, what gives? The entire village seems to be coming here in the middle of the night. And those voices are angry. On your feet, men, we may be... No one leave him up. How can he bring great trouble to Kabila? What troubles have we brought to your tribe, mighty chief? Better sure found dead in temple. Murdered. Mask the Monotiki stolen. One of you die for crime. can say exactly where he was at the moment of killing, but that does not make any of us a murderer. Yeah, how about that, Tarzan? The better sure was killed with a gun, a weapon the Monotiki are unfamiliar with. So perhaps they are somewhat justified in limiting their suspects to the members of our party. And they heard Mr. Tsao and Vortan admit they'd like to take the mask of Monotiki back with them, and now it's missing. Well, I sure ain't got it. But I got all the rest of the masks I want. I'm itching to get out of this joint. Even I am ready to leave. And the mask of Monotike is not in my unworthy possession. What in the world is that revolting-looking mess they're ladling into those tiny calabash bowls? A mixture of native vegetables and herbs has been combined with their witch doctor's medicines, and he's placed a spell on it. All of us must drink of it. We're supposed to swallow that foul concoction? Why? Those of us who are pure in heart will experience only an unpleasant taste, but the murderer will reveal himself by the sickness of guilt. It is the belief deeply rooted in the Monotiki tribe. Drink Dawa, Roboko. I drink deeply, mighty chief. See, I am pure. He probably drank buckets of the stuff during his youth, but I... Drink Dawa, Wana Tsao. I won't do nothing to him. He can take anything. He belongs to one of the mind-over-matter cults. Now watch him. Mm. The taste is not unpleasant to my palate, mighty chief. Drink, Dawa, Tarzan. I drink. <sighs> you pure, Tarzan. Buona Vortan. Okay, bottoms up. 
Oh, hey, I drunk worse than that in plenty of Nairobi bars. And now last of Wagani cigars, and I can't drink that stuff. My stomach is in very bad shape. I, I've had a lot of trouble with my digestion. Drink. They would consider your refusal to swallow it a full confession. Drink. All right, here goes. I'm afraid I'm going to be very, very sick. The others are leaving. They're packing their things now. So all they have to do is pick up the mask on their way, wherever one of them's got it hidden. Then they're in the clear, leaving me to pay for their crime. Our only hope is to find the mask first. Our search must start outside the temple here. If I can find any trail. Look! Under the steps, leading into the temple. The mask of Monotiki. Smashed and battered almost beyond recognition. It's Vortan's work. He's the brutal type. Vortan killed to secure the mask he could sell in Nairobi for a fortune and then ruin it and leave it here. Well, so? A fanatical worshiper of beauty destroy the mask? No, Mr. Albright. I was unwilling to believe the results of their strange trial, but the only one who could have despoiled that mask and still have his fondest wish is you. What do you mean? The mask could have been destroyed and quickly hidden after you'd taken the picture you said you'd give your right arm to get. Mask of Monotiki. Smashed wound. You do, man with hair like winter. Wait. Tarzan, if I did this thing to get a picture, then where is it? So far as I know, my camera's still inside the temple. We go inside. There. White man's magic. <laughs> Look, they, they kept it in the corner of the tabernacle beside the mask. Well, it's, it's just as I left it. Tarzan, do, do you suppose I could take a picture of the tabernacle? My last picture? I suppose so, but I doubt you'll live long enough. Cousin, it's been used. Someone's used my camera. What? With this model, you can't press the trigger after a picture's been taken until you've rolled a film ahead. Someone's taken a picture, I'm sure of it. Goodness knows when or what of. If it were taken last night, would the picture come out? Well, if those altar torches were lit at the time and we leave the film in the developer long enough, we might see something. Could you develop the film here? I, I have all my supplies in that kit. Your life could depend on the results of your developing, Mr. Albright. It's a wild idea, of course, but if the camera was tampered with, it might have happened around the time of the murder. It's barely possible that it might give us some sort of clue. Uh, uh, great Chief, do you understand what I've been getting at? No, do you? I give you one hour. Try white man's magic. <laughs> Pretty fuzzy. But it showed a figure firing a gun at the fetisher. We have our proof. If we can recognize him from the print, I don't know. How soon we know who is man? The sunlight printing is pretty slow, but another few seconds and we'll either know or realize we'll never know. In which case, I suppose I'll have to abide by the results of the trial. Oh, please hurry up, Mr. Albright. The others have already left camp by this time. And... I'm taking it out of the fray now. You look... I'm afraid to. It's... It's Robert. Robert firing the gun. Roboco. Roboco not come from behind shadow. Let me out, Tarzan. I'll confess everything. Go ahead, Robert. My, my father was executed because the fetish us that it was the will of the mask of Monotiki. I, I, his son, left to crawl under a shadow. When years later I met Mr. Tsao and Borton, I saw my opportunity to get revenge and blame it on one of them. Your, your coming along made it easier, I thought. You not know a white man's magic. I know of the white man's camera. But I still don't know who took this picture. That's something I hadn't thought of. Tarzan, 
You once said you wished that there were a pixie inside the temple to use your camera while it was there. Well, apparently you got your wish. The only way I can figure it, Robert opened the door to the temple and the pixie slipped in. And when Robert forced open the front of the tabernacle and removed the mask, the pixie found something inside the tabernacle that was even more fascinating to him than the mask was to Robert. And when the fetisher surprised the intruder as he was escaping and was killed as a result, the pixie chose that moment to use the camera as he'd seen you. Uh, Machina, let go of my camera. Mr. Albright, I do not believe in spoiling mischievous children, even when they're grown children with families of their own, but... I sincerely believe you should give the camera to Nakima as a reward for finding the murderer and saving your life. 